Now, yeah. if I recall, 300 seemed to end rather definitively. So this is less a sequel than a contemporaneous historical saga. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely, it definitely, um, it it ended the way it ended, and that was. But I mean, what this, what we've tried to do with the second film is, it's really a companion piece. You know, it is on the same, like two parallel tracks, two trains are running, and Thermopylae is going on here, and you know, this was happening in Sparta, and now this is happening in Athens, and the naval, the naval war, and that's historically, it's like we were focused on the first film very tight on degrees, and now we pull back, and now we see like, oh my God, there's a lot more going on to this, uh, you know, this war. I think that's the beauty of it is that. Um, the, the, I think that the, this movie is not a prequel or a sequel, and we kept joking about it, it's called an equal, really, because it really is, uh, uh, for me, it was a fresh idea, because it, it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's another perspective on the same exact time. So really what's happening is that you're, you're, you're seeing conceptually something very fresh, because it gives you uh, another point of view about events that were zoomed in on the first one. And that is, is original. Right. How do you go about managing uh, the mixture of history and mythology? And do you need to delineate them? Uh, you probably can answer it better. Uh, I'm, I can give my version. Uh, I think, um, I mean, one of the luxuries, and we've, I've spoken about this a little bit before, uh, is that in the original and in, and in a film like this, we use the device or the, the tool, which is you know, telling the story through a storyteller's eyes. And that, that liberates you from necessarily being completely historically accurate or completely like, it, it doesn't bind you to history. So you know that this is based, about, based in history, but not like constrained by history. And I think that that, that allows then a filmmaker, uh, if it were Zach in the first film or Noam in this film, to then really go and explore all of the moments in the movie and uh, accentuate them, amplify them, however you know, he, he sees. Yeah. You know, h history, A, shouldn't be boring. And, and number two is that really it allows you, this is a storyteller's point of view, and storytellers, by definition, wants their story to be well-received and liked. So we embellish a little bit, and we deviate a little bit from what seems to be accurate. And it all services that, conceptual idea that this is a storyteller's point of view. And we are storytellers, all of us tell stories with a little bit of hyperbole and a little bit of embellishment. And that's the charm of it. And um, not using it, I think, is, 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 is a crime because we're not doing uh, a movie for the History Channel. When 300 came out, it really was groundbreaking in terms of delivering an historical environment in a virtual world. Um, and that was seven years ago. So what advances have been made um, and how have you been able to improve on that technology? You've obviously added sea and water into it to a significant level and that, that must have complicated the task. Yeah. I mean, it's a complicated uh, um, assignment in that way uh, because really um, I, think, I think that we've never really seen sea battles at that scale, um, certainly not like that. And I think technology allows you to do that, and that's really the challenge. Look, we should have shot this movie on green screen with not a drop of water. And uh, to create that at the end, that you look at it, uh, you know, even I look at it sometimes and go like, we did that? Um, and the answer is yes. I mean, the, the technology and storytelling techniques now allow you to really have no boundaries on your imagination. And uh, or I'm sure that in 20 years we'll look at this and go, wow, you know, we moved quite a bit from it. But as of now, I think that that's really the the, the beauty of it is that really the it, it's the 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 limit is in you, not in the technology. I think the the other thing which is interesting, and I, maybe you can speak to this as well, is that you know you, you, these guys filmed this thing like the first film in a, in a green sound stage and. Uh, you know, the first film, Zach would send all the work to wor be workflowed out on a timeline with all the VFX artists who are all amazing on you know whatever amount of budget they would have. But it might be weeks, it might be months to get shots rendered back. And now the technology has advanced, and the processing, computing processing, has advanced so 
I mean, it's so fast that you that I think Gnome was able to see things not that would take three, four, five months to wait to be delivered, but might take you know half that time, or maybe you know, and it, it shortened. So then he can be giving notes and say a little, you know, bring this down, or more, you know, more horses here, or whatever it would be. And I think that that really then allows you to dump more visual you know, just everything, just, just it really just, you can refine what you're getting instead of going like four or five months down the road and going, okay, that's the shot I got and I got to open the movie in three weeks. And uh, I, think, I think that that's, I think that's a really, it's an amazing time for filmmakers because it's, it, as Noam said, it's like, it's only limited by what he imagines. Right. Yeah. I was uh, watching the film, I was thinking, God, I hope these guys get their facts right. Because, you know, my kids get all their history from movie references. <laughs> so, have you? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> and is, is Themistocles, uh, have you sort of built him into this heroic character? Or no, he, he, was, he was, I mean, he was very much a, a guy who came from the wrong side of the street uh, in, in Athens and worked his way up, and he wasn't of privilege. and. And uh, he was a politician and uh, an orator and uh, a guy who was just an everyman. And, uh, and he had to convince Athens to build the navy and to fight the fight. And uh, he was, I mean, he's really the opposite of Leonidas. I mean, Leonidas was a kid from, you know, age seven going through the agogi and the warrior culture and just and that war was everything and having a beautiful death was everything and Themistocles is much more conflicted and there's a lot more texture to him of being uh, rallying his men but also seeing the cost and the burden of command I think that that's and where Leonidas wouldn't even think about that he'd just be like we fight to the death so you know there's there's a very interesting part uh, my point of view in, in addition to that is that you're saying do the um, are my children going to look at it and really understand history? And my uh, my goal, or I think our goal is, I hope our kids look at this and become uh, history lovers. And that's really what it's about, is that if you can look at this and go, God, history was cool. Yeah. Uh, then maybe you go to the histories and really learn them and study them. And that's really the challenge. The challenge is not to me, or, or the importance is not necessarily just to be accurate, but to be entertaining enough and make you love it, that you understand that it's, it's fun. Yeah. Now, I, I think you swap <clears throat> one Aussie for another, because uh, Joel Edgerton was attached for a little while, right? And you swapped him out for... We talked to Joel, but he wasn't yeah, attached. He wasn't. Enough. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, but so how did you discover Sullivan Stapleton? I saw and, a movie, uh, I saw a movie uh, Animal Kingdom, and was blown away. And, uh, you know, Themistocles is a very complex character, because he... He and he's not—he's not Gerard. He, he as, as a character, he needs to be somebody else. He, he comes from the wrong side of the tracks. He's not a king, and he is—he uh, is a politician, not just a warrior. And he needs—and he—he needs to have support from the people. He's the—he is a politician. So there's a there's there's other colors that need to be uh, uh, and charming and sexy and all that kind of stuff. So I think. Uh, and there aren't that many who can pull that off. So I love that guy, and I, I think he did a great job.